Alrighty, you home frogs. What is going on, folks? This is your Yankee Hardcore Pipe Bomb Messiah here with you. Your personification of greatness when it comes to wrestling talk here with the IWC. It is Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Uh, this is the first video of the new year. And um, boy, oh boy, I did miss you guys. Um, I know you guys did too. And um it's really full speed ahead because uh, we're going to get into a lot of topics here today. And um, the first video that I do have for you guys today is uh, we have a big show that is going to be happening on Thursday on NJPW World. It is Wrestle Kingdom uh, 19th. It is the 19th edition of the Wrestle Kingdom shows uh, from New Japan Pro Wrestling and Really what I'm going to get into here in this video here today is to give you a recap of what we saw in the last year of New Japan Pro Wrestling. And what New Japan Pro Wrestling is doing right now is they're reloading and rebuilding. And I feel like as we get into this new calendar year, that's really going to be the theme for New Japan Um because if you look at 2023, um, New Japan is building up new talent. You got uh, Shota Unamao, Ren uh, Narita, Yoka uh, Tazushi, Callum Newman, uh, Yuka Yamura, uh, Rohe um, Okawa, and um, Kasi Fujita. And they have really elevated on wrestlers like Gabe Kidd, Alex Coughlin, uh, Drilla uh, Maloney, Clock Connors, and uh, Hulico. Because they really want those guys to be the future main event title holders down in Japan. And of course, you know, you're seeing uh, these creations and... Uh, dissolution of, you know, the fractions like Suzuki Goon, uh, Just Five Guys, Gorillas of Destiny, Bullet Club, and House of Torture. Now, let me get into the uh, Bullet Club because the Bullet Club is it, like the NWO from back in the WCW. If you remember when uh, NWO had the black and white and then they had the Wolf Pack. Uh, you're seeing that right now um, with the Bullet Club because you got um, this Bullet Club War Dogs and then you got the House of Torture version of the Bullet Club and you got the Outliers like uh, Bad Luck Filet, uh, Taiji Ishimori, Chase Owens, and Ketna. Uh, Chris Bay and Ace Austin because they have been in Bullet Club, but they have not been with New Japan Pro Wrestling since 2022. Now, we all know down in AEW, Jay White and Juice Robinson, they got the Bullet Club gold. But you know those guys aren't going to be appearing uh, with New Japan Pro Wrestling. And um, Guido uh, is putting a lot of emphasis, you know... Uh, the violence and really the unpredictability of his version of Bullet Club. And they have built heat, but they haven't built major main event stars. Now, of course, you know, we got to talk about the IWGP Women's Champion. Um, we know Kyrie Sane right now is in WWE, uh, Mercedes Monet. Um, of course, you know, the big rumor from uh, Sean Ross Sapp that it appears likely that Mercedes Monet uh, is going to be signing with AEW. We all know um, last week there was talks about her possibly going to the WWE, but um, we just don't know yet. Um, talks have broken down, and now it seems at the moment... That AEW is the flavor of the month. Um, the current champion, uh, Mayu uh, Ranaani, um, is not 
going to be wrestling at this Wrestle Kingdom show, which is disappointing. And, um, you know, you do have another wrestler in there in Julia uh, who's getting some big attention within uh, WWE. And she might be going with um, WWE in the near future. Uh, she holds the NJPW Strong Women's Championship. So, really... The theme I have to say this year is that this is going to be a reloading, rebuilding year for New Japan Pro Wrestling. And let's talk about what's going to happen at Wrestle Kingdom 19. Um, I'm not going to get into um, the pre-show type of stuff. Um, That's really not my cup of joe, to be honest with you. Um, I do know that this match that will happen, the King of Pro Wrestling... 2024 ran bow. Uh, that's really going to determine um, who's going to be uh, facing for the KOPW 2024 title at New Year's Dash, which is going to be on that Friday. So I'm not really going to talk about that. And um, let's get into really the main card. That's what we should be focusing on. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to talk about the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships on the line. Uh, Francesco Akira and TJP. Uh, TJ Perkins going up against Drilla Maloney and Clock Connors. Um, if you look at what's happening here between United Empire and Bullet Club, they're at a crossroads right now. And um, we know about Will Ospreay, him leaving New Japan Pro Wrestling full time. And United Empire doesn't have a leader. Um, you know, Maloney and uh, Connors, uh, they're the only members in Bullet Club that do hold championship gold. And if uh, Catch-22 wins, you look at United Empire, they will look stronger as Osprey is about to move to AEW. But uh, Maloney and Connors... Um, they need the title for Bullet Club to remain strong. So I'm gonna uh, Bullet Club. They did beat Catch Twenty Two, um, December Twenty Second. It was in a coffin match, and that was when they locked uh, TJP in a coffin. But this time around, uh, Catch Twenty Two will get their uh, components and they will regain the titles here. So I'm gonna go with Catch Twenty Two here. Uh, to win the match. Um, next match that I'm going to talk about. It is the NJPW World Television Championship. It is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Going up against the champion. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. And um, we all know the news that came out. And that's something that um, I want to talk about. As um, we ended the year in 2023. Um, Hiroshi Tanahashi is now the new president of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um But he can still perform in a top singles match. This is the big stage. Um, We all know, I've talked about Tanahashi here in the past. Uh, Tanahashi, he's not the wrestler that he once was. Um, But if there's one thing that Zack Sabre will do, is he will bring out the best in Tanahashi. And it was actually one year ago that um, this title was created and this title was to help build a younger star, or younger stars, I should say, in general. And Zack Sabre Jr. has held that title for all of this calendar year. And he, what he's really done with that, and you've got to give him the props to it, is he has made that championship prestigious. He has defended that title 13 times. Um... I will say this, Tanahashi does not need this championship. But if Tanahashi wins, he could say that, hey, you know what? I've won every title in New Japan. I'm a Grand Slam champion. I get that. That's your legacy right there. But that will go against what the belt was originally designed for. And that's why I have to say Zack Sabres Jr. is still going to uh, keep this title and, um, but yeah, just like what Tanahashi has said, um, 
when he was introduced as the president of New Japan Pro Wrestling, that he's going to continue to wrestle and win titles. I just hope that is not the case. Um, he said that his goal for New Japan is for more sold-out arenas across Japan, and that should be based on booking, storylines, and the marketing. Um, next match that we have is Yoka uh, Tayushi going up against you, uh, you are Yamamura. Um, let me get back to that December twenty second show that happened at Coken Hall. Uh, Yumara he defeated um, Tazushi, and this is a match where, like I said about the first match um, of this card, I think Tazushi's gonna get his component here and he's gonna win this match. Um, you got a storyline here between these two guys. Um, so, I, I just wanted to make that quick prediction here. And, um, I'm just gonna move on, guys. So, we do have, um, a special tag team match coming up here. It is, uh, Kaito Kaimamoto going up against Shoha Yumimo and Okay, so let me get this again. Um, Kaito Kayo Mija and uh, Shota Yumaro going up against Evil and Renata. Um, I'm really looking forward to this match because um, you've had this current storyline between uh, Yumino and uh, Naita, and it's been happening for a year. Um, they have been opponents, they have been teammates, and now they just hate each other. Uh, Kayo, uh, Maya, and Evil, they're really the supporting characters in this. And this story should not be ending at Wrestle Kingdom. Because you want to build this over time, and you want to have many matches, and neither, uh, Kai, um, Maya, or Evil will be hurt by this defeat. Uh, Yumeno, you know, he has been chasing uh, Naida for weeks. And Naida has been able to attack and escape. Now, the heat for uh, Naida and um, House of Torture, I mean, it's nuclear with the Japanese fans. And I really do believe that New Japan is going to continue with that. Um, I do see some shenanigans here, um, because I do see House of Torture getting involved, and that is going to lead to, uh, Narita, uh, pinning, uh, Kayomaya here, so it's not really the most popular decision, so to say, but I am gonna go with that as, um, my finish here. And uh, we're going to get back and uh, we're going to be talking about more championship matches that are going to be uh, defended here on this show. Uh, the Never Openweight Championship on the line. Uh, Tamatonga, or Tamatonga, I should say, going up against uh, Shingo. Uh, Taigari. Um, let's get into what happened here. Um, Taigari won the Never Openweight Championship. Against Tamatonga, October 28th. Um, but he has been in a supporting role. And not in a major title picture. Since it, this past calendar year. Uh, you know, Shango is a former IWGP heavyweight champion. And actually won the title uh, during the COVID era of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, but Tamatonga and David Finley, you know... They dominated that never division for most of 2023. And I see Tamatanga winning the title back. And I do see them having a rubber match. I, I do believe that this feud will not end. Because you do have another show that happens uh, later in the month. It's going to be the new beginnings. Um, and that's going to be in Nagoya. So that will be on January 20th. So if you're looking at that on your calendar, that
that's going to be on a Saturday. So I do see these guys going at it again. But Tamatonga is going to win this match. And you're going to have that, as I like to say in professional wrestling, the one-all. Who's going to win that deciding third match? And then um, you have the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships and the New Japan Strong Tag Team Championship on the line. El Fantasimo and uh, Hayuko going up against Yoshihashi and a Hiroki Goto. This is going to be an awesome match. This could be one of the top matches of the night. Um, I hope for all four of these guys are healing from their last encounter in the World Tag League. Um, I'm going to say uh, Bushimon here. Um, El Fantasimo and um, Hirokio pull out the victory here to retain the tag team titles and really solidify themselves as the greatest tag team in New Japan Pro Wrestling history. Putting it up there with the Bullet Club guys, you know, Doc Gallows and Kyle Anderson. Um, just to name that, because, you know, I started watching really NJPW on a full-time basis when those guys were around. So, um, let's move it on here. Um, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship on the line. You got El Desperado going up against Hamoru Takahashi. Um, you had this storyline... Um, with El Desperado and um, Master Wado, who, by the way, is going to be in that uh, pre-show battle royal, so to say. Um, they were reluctant teammates in in the Super Junior Tag League. And Hamoru made an offer to Desperado, let's have this match. And Desperado accepted it. This is going to be a good match here, but... The manner by which it came about, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't like it. Um, you got no heat. You know how I am with wrestling and how you create matches. You need to have the heat. You need to have the storyline. Neither of that was built in this match. Um, and especially with Master Wado, um, just why is Master Wado... Um, Demoted to a battle royal in the pre-show. I, I don't get that. Um, and you look at it. He was in the junior heavyweight match last year. Difference a year makes. But I'm going to go with uh, Takahashi here to retain the title. And um, All right. Three matches remaining. We're going to get into it. The IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship. Who wins this? It's going to be between John Moxley, David Finley, and Will Ospreay. So, they are now having a new championship called the Global Heavyweight Championship. Kind of reminds me of Global Force Wrestling. Let me just say it like this. When they got rid of the uh, Intercontinental Championship back in 2021, it, you all remember Kota Abushi, um, he merged the titles. And this was during um, the COVID era of New Japan Pro Wrestling. They should have kept the Intercontinental Championship. But what they wanted to do was, okay, let's have the IWGP U.S. title. Obviously, the the reason why they called it the IWGP U.S. title was because they were trying, and I'm talking about New Japan, they're trying to mock it to the American wrestling viewers. When you had Kenny, and I'm talking about Kenny Omega, he was the champion over there. And then... You call it the UK title. Alrighty. And now it's uh, the global title. And the UK is because Will Ospreay had held that title. And changed it to the UK title. What are you doing here? NJPW. Like, 
You're making that belt lackluster. It's not important. But I digress here. Uh, when it comes to the individuals here in this match, John Moxley and David Finley, they could have a good brawl here. You know about Will Ospreay. He's more of the high flying. Um, he has been treated as a baby face in recent months in New Japan. So he's going to bring that style to that match. We all know about Will Ospreay leaving New Japan and going to AEW. Moxley, we know, is in AEW. So you kind of look at the variables here. We're talking about AEW here. Will Ospreay's first feud could be John Moxley. Think about that. So I'm going to go with David Finley here to win this match. He, to me, he's going to pin Moxley, win the belt, and his MO with this is he is going to build the Bullet Club back. To what it once was. Because I'll be honest with you. Bullet Club right now. They have been lacking. For years. They have been lacking. Ever since Omega. And the Bucks. Left. New Japan Pro Wrestling. And went to AEW. Because they were to me the true guys. Of the Bullet Club. And they held on to it. When AJ left. To go to the WWE. And I will say this. I would expect. Um, Finley to have more matches. With John Moxley. I would say maybe. Uh, NJPW US. Um, maybe in AEW. And you know that's going to make Tony Khan happy. Because the relationship that. He has with New Japan. And. The fact that he wants to make AEW know that WWE now is already having the biggest year. And they, they've already had um, a big stop to what happened last night on Raw. You're going to want to rival Triple H. And I expect um, those two to have um, matches in NJPW Strong. Uh I call it NJPW USA, but NJPW Strong um, as well. So, um, let's talk about the match here. Kaskushka Okada going up against Brian Danielson. This match, I really hope, is a five-star classic. Um, we know about Brian Danielson's injuries. Um, it's been well-documented. Uh, we know that he's approaching the end of his full-time wrestling career. Um, Okada, you know, he's been healthy all of last year. He's getting ready for his climb back to the world title. Um, we all know what happened the first time that they fought each other. Brian Danielson won that match at the Forbidden Door. But Okada wants revenge. And also, Brian Danielson wants revenge because he got hurt in that match. He was out for eight weeks. He could not be at um, the AEW All-In at Wembley. So, I do think they're going to have a rubber match. And I really hope it is at All-In in Wembley. I, I have to go with that. That match... If Brian Danielson did not get hurt, the second match would have happened at Wembley. I'm just being really honest with you guys. That's one of my what if files right there. But the storyline itself, and I hate to say this, it's weak. But the match should be good. Um, I have to say, with the Japanese fans, um, I'm going to go with Okada to win this match. I, you know, this is another one of those themes here. It's going to be a one-up. And then the third match, I'll make a prediction on that. It's going to happen 
at Wrestle Kingdom. And yeah, I know Okada's going to be a free agent. Um, I don't think he's the big sign-in um, that TNA is going to announce at Hot Kill. And I know WWE... Um, I know he doesn't have interest in going to WWE, but you got to think about it too. He could go to AEW, you know, and that's really the beauty of this month because there's a lot of free agents out there in um, professional wrestling right now. So let's get into the main event, um, IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Tatsuya Naito uh, is going to be going up against Sadata here. Um, the build for this match has been quiet. Um, another reason why I have to uh, put New Japan Pro Wrestling's booking as a suspect here because um, Naito, he is going to be the favorite in this match. And he has barely wrestled the past four months. Ever since winning the G1 Climax. I know he had eye surgery during the Tag League tournaments. And when he made appearances, he got the support of the fans. Sanaya, he's a popular champion. But when you have those two collide, you know, it kind of reminds me of Hogan and Warrior, WrestleMania 6. 50 50 crowd. I do feel that this is going to be more of a 75 25 crowd. They're going to support Naito to win this match. Um, I do believe he will win this. And he's going to give the fans what he promised. And it's going to be great for that stable. Los Ingojonables de Japan. So I do see Naito winning this match and becoming the new IWGP heavyweight champion. So that is my predictions for this show. Um... I might try to do a recap of this, um, talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling, because like I said, in this new year, I want to focus on um, a lot of wrestling promotions in 2024. You know, TNA is coming back. I'm excited about that because I am a TNA original. Um, when they first came back, when they first came out back in 2002, I want to do a lot of TNA and all. I'm still going to stick with WWE and AEW. Um, so that pretty much is going to do it, guys. And of course, you know, later on tonight, um, I'm going to be doing the Yankee Offseason Podcast live, 8 o'clock. We're going to be talking New York Yankees baseball, what's been going on with the Yankees. So until then, see you guys later tonight. I am out. So long for now. Peace.